oh man, all right, we may, Jamie, what happened? I cut off all my hair and <laughs> aged quite a bit. Uh, decided to wear my shirts right side out. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it looks good. I like, I'm glad that you made that decision, at Thank least with you. the shirts. Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. This is Talk Heathen. Today is Sunday, January 7th. Today is episode one of season two. We made it. And uh, Wait, so I was the last one on season one. You were and the, the first one on season two. You were the season finale, right? <sighs> you were the special guest. And we liked you so much, we wanted to have you back. It's like a, I wish we would have left like a cliffhanger at the end of the last one, you know. <laughs> Will Matt survive? I don't know. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I did get out of Jamie's uh, basement eventually, and that's why yeah. he's not here. Um, and he's not calling in, I made sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to be here. I'm really glad you could guest in again. Um, I did want to talk about a couple things, because I've been gone for two weeks, and I'm really, really excited to be back. Awesome. Um, so the first is I was watching the YouTube comments, and, you know, Jimmy doesn't put his last name on the air. And so people were asking, oh, that's Matt's son. That's uh, Matt's kid. Uh, uh, yeah, it's Jamie Dillahunty. No wonder. So uh, I, I'm just going to continue that. I'm gonna... I think I may have to go, because like when, <laughs> when he asked me to tweet it out, he sent it to me on uh, the Facebook message. Yeah. And nobody said anything about not putting his last name on. So I think I put his last name in the initial tweet oh, shit. for the show. But Hey, well, it's going to happen eventually. But It's but, all good. Yeah, that's That last all right. name was fake. Jamie Dillahunty. He is Jamie Dillahunty. Yes. He's my son. <laughs> Jamie, I am your father. I love that. <laughs> so uh, a couple things for you viewing at home. We are having technical issues here at the Free Thought Library, and so we want to be as clear as we can. Um, number one, it seems like our internet is really not working. Uh, we didn't even connect for the show. They're using my cell phone mobile hotspot to run the show right now. Welcome to live TV. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, I'm, I'm excited that we're doing it, and I'm excited that I get to be here. The phones look like they're kind of working, but I did a test phone call. We couldn't really hear anything. Um, I think we're going to talk, Yeah. and there's we'll somebody looking through the YouTube comments to see if there's questions coming in, but I will say, this sort of thing... Before we were streaming, back when we, when I first started doing the Atheist Experience, yeah. you know, four, almost 14 years ago, uh, we weren't even streaming. We, I don't even sure we, we didn't post to YouTube then. I'm not sure YouTube existed when I first started, but we'll see. Uh, so the show had been on for seven years, yeah. and w w everything that you can imagine going wrong with a live TV show that was on public access did. Uh, there were weeks where we didn't have phones working, and this is old school, you know, like landline phones. It's some, sometimes it just didn't work. <laughs> All right. We had uh, we filmed in, a, in the tiny studio, which is, was just a little bit bigger than the room we're in now, and they had three massive TV cameras okay. uh, on rolling little tripod things, uh, which took up a lot of space, and there were lights to show you which one to look at. The lights frequently did not work. And nice. you didn't always have a monitor, so like we can see ourselves in that monitor there. And I could tell that if Mark were to do a one shot directly on me, I know that now I'm on there, and now Eric can pick his nose. Yep, that's the whole reason to do this, so you can pick <laughs> your nose and nobody sees anything. Hey, Claire. So uh, we we had this set up, and also we needed a backdrop, and we didn't always have uh, green screen capability. And I don't remember who uh, created it, but we had. A PVC pipe construction. I remember that. That you had to put together every week and take apart at the end of the show. So you would put together this network of PVC tubes and corners and then string a banner in front of it so that the banner was right behind us. Uh, so this is nothing. The fact that we need to do, um, a year and a half ago or so, I did a, a walkthrough of the studio and showed, you know, hey, here's our soundboard and the, and the technical stuff behind it. And in the last couple months, Everything about this building has changed. It has. I'm not, not just talking about the bathroom renovation. I mean, the audio video stuff, uh, Vern and Mark and everybody back there has just been kicking ass. And I don't recognize any of it. It might be cool to do a new behind the scenes. Well, especially since they got rid of this huge soundboard and now it's all digital. So everything's yeah. nice and clean and they've got the multiple screens. It's like Which means you can save the settings for me. 
what my mic should sound like. Yeah. Uh, and then, hey, we're doing the eighth experience. Matt's on this mic. Oh, we're doing talk Ethan. Matt's on this mic, and uh, just pulls up. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I'm kind of talking out of my butt a little bit because Vern hasn't walked me through it, but that's my my uh, impression from the first run. I, I, I think it's really, really neat. Actually, um, speaking of green screens, um, there is a gift for you mm. um, that uh, I was asked to hand you. Uh oh. And it's this right here. Oh! Which is going to be fantastic, because now you get to explain what it is to the people who don't see it on, uh, <laughs> on the air, because it's invisible. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a, a perfect, it's a green screen colored shirt, but it has the Atheist Experience <laughs> logo with my name, uh, and I will wear this sucker around all over the place. And the one thing is, if you run into me and I'm wearing this, you can take a picture, and then it can end up on the internet, and you can green screen and whatever you want behind me. <laughs> um, or at I, least on you. I'm not, I can't remember for sure. It, it was, so either, uh, uh, I'm going to, whoever thought of this initially, or, or prompted me to, to think of this design, uh, I want to say it was Ian Rowland, but it may not be. I think, if I remember correctly, I was in London with Ian Rowland, who's a, World famous mentalist and a, and a friend of mine, a fan of the show. Um, we were riding on the train, and I think if he said something like, "Every time I look at you, we were sitting across from each other. I just can't help but picture you, with like with a frame around you." <laughs> and Halloween was coming up, and I thought about the possibility of just putting like a TV frame around my head and doing the the banner across the bottom. And I talked to Mark. Uh, this may be a little bit low, because I don't know that they could actually print t-shirts with it, you know, like, directly at the collar. Um, but yeah, now I've got a, uh... <laughs> Look, now you're on the Atheist Experience. With the floating head of Matt Dillahunty. <laughs> that is awesome. And on the back is, uh, it's behind the scenes. I can't see when I hold this up, but... Yes. That is outstanding. Thanks, guys. I, can't, I cannot wait to uh, wear it around town, wear it to... Might wear it to events. Dig it, man. Um, That's cool. Yeah. And see, so you guys can get them done with the talk Egan logo. Although, I'm going to say something that I thought of last week. What's up? So, if you look right there at the talk Heathen logo. Yeah. In my head, if the T were just to slide a little bit to the left, mm -hmm. this could be a Christian show because the H would be two crosses and then there would be the one cross in the center that's higher above, so the T is like, so I just looked at it and I was like, holy crap, that's the three crosses on there. You know, we actually have uh, a couple design ideas that came out and that is very close to one that came out. Uh, so now you're onto it, we just... Um, this is, I've been secretly pulled into a Christian talk show. Uh, yes. In our own studio. We need to, we need to talk. Um, have you heard the good news about our Lord and Savior? Jesus I have. I, I've heard the good news that he's a myth. <laughs> I've heard the good news that uh, he's not a myth, but not divine. Um, that would actually be bad news, I would think. The, uh, Christopher Hitchens was famously pointed this out, the, the, the very idea that there's a God who's watching your every move, and you know, that would be a bad thing. Yeah, well, it'd be awkward to masturbate, that's for sure. Yeah, well, <laughs> unless your fetish was being watched, and then all of a sudden, maybe that's it. Maybe everybody who uh, thinks that God is everywhere and watching them has a fetish of being watched. You know, I just remembered um, my mom is watching this. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, I will try. See, that makes no, the other joke no. that I was going to do earlier. Do it. No, uh, don't worry. Well, I was, when I did the Jamie, I am your father, I was like, on occasion, the atheist experience gets email from people who are like, your show talks too much about gay stuff. What's, what's that have to do with it and everything else? And I was like, I'm not your father, I'm your daddy. But, <laughs> yeah. all right, let's get on to, okay. to more serious stuff. Run, run your show, this. man. Don't, I, don't let me I'm take over. I'm stoked, man. I'm just having fun here. Okay, so I do want to um, address a couple things. Uh, the first was when I left off, I was having this back and forth with Hamish. Do you remember Hamish? I, I remember the name, and I couldn't tell you the specifics of, of all oh. the discussions, but... Yeah, he, uh, he, was, he was saying that the Lord is the only, the only way that you can have morality. And um, we just went back and forth about it, and it wound up getting to veganism. Hmm. And, um, and how, come we, how can we be moral creatures and eat meat? 
And that kind of put me in a weird position because it never really interested me enough as a subject to investigate it, right? And so I, I looked at the facts. The facts are that I value animal life more than human life. I eat meat and I don't feel guilty about it. Wait, um, you, you value animal life more than human life? Or other way, other way around. I value Although human we are life animals. animal life. So. I, well, I mean... Um, you value human life over non-human life? Yes. Yeah. Yes, which isn't to say that I'm a monster, right? If, if yeah. I had the chance to save the last polar bear, I would. Yeah. Um, it, but what does, that, what does that mean about me, and how am I you're internally fine. consistent about that? Yeah, and so when I looked it up, I thought, you know, okay, I'm speciesist. Yeah. And that's, and that's okay. And then... Which now, congratulations, you're now going to get the ethical vegan... Oh, we've been getting them already. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's all right. Um, I'm probably going to do a video for the Atheist Debates thing roughly talking about this because in the 14 years I've done the Atheist Experience, uh, the subjects come up, you know, a handful of times. And mostly what happens is somebody calls in and they present their arguments, and my job is to take those arguments apart right. and point out what's wrong with them, where they went right, where they went wrong, uh, to, to explain why I don't agree. That is not the same as I'm now putting forward what my position is. That would be a, a, a brief talk or a lecture. Yeah. I can't put, I, I have not put forward in any concise sense what my view is on uh, morality as it relates to non-human animals, et cetera. I didn't want to take the calls on the atheist experience quite often because it doesn't have anything to do with atheism. It doesn't have anything to do with religion. Now, saying that, uh, it does have something to do with you know, morality, if you're talking about veganism from an ethical standpoint. Yeah. Uh, it certainly has a, uh, value in discussion and debate. But the real thing is, is that not everybody on the atheist experience, or perhaps even on Talk Heathen, uh, has the same view and agrees. Right. And so as the public face of the atheist experience when I'm on it, I need to make sure that I'm representing um, the ACA's position statements. Yeah. And that if I'm departing from, you know, what the consensus is to make sure I, people know I'm speaking on behalf of me, that Jen, Russell's Racy, M Martin, Jeff, whoever, uh, Don, they don't necessarily share that view. Yeah, that's true. And so I would prefer to keep calls on the show within the realm of religion. <laughs> well, it, it, it worked its way there, and yeah. I think that it really struck a chord with me because it's a rabbit hole that I just did not know was there, and it goes deep. Yeah, and there's like guys... Like, it goes really deep. Even this week, there's a guy who put together a 30-minute video tearing apart a call I did. Uh, and I haven't watched... I watched a minute and 45 seconds, and in the first minute and 45 seconds, he'd already uh, poisoned the well um, and made assumptions. He's like, oh, I can see that Matt doesn't want to discuss this. Uh, maybe it's because, you know... I, he goes on to, I guess, try to guess why I don't, didn't want to discuss it. And the, the real reason is, one, as I stated before, I wanted to keep the show primarily about... Uh, atheism, religion, etc. And the other one is, is that every time we've had an ethical vegan call to make their case, um, it's fallacy ridden. It is uh, emotional, please. Or we just fundamentally disagree on an aspect of morality, but we can't discuss that fine point of disagreement because it's just, oh, you're fine with you know eating meat. And I'll give you a couple of quick examples. Um, to just, just seen today on Twitter, there's a guy, um, veganism is unstoppable, I think, is his Twitter handle. Oh, I'm sure he's losing his shit right now. And <laughs> maybe. Uh, and he, he tweeted out something about, you know, like, oh, do you have a moral obligation to, to not have dog fights, you know, like in your backyard? And whoever he was talking to was like, yes. And he's like, ah, then... You know, your moral view is going to crumble if it, if it doesn't lead to veganism from there. So here's the thing. Veganism is not eating meat. That is separate from why you don't eat meat. Right. Okay. So they would argue, oh, it's about uh, harm. Well, my morality is not based in any, on any simple understanding of harm. Uh, because sometimes harm may actually be a, a net moral good. I mean, you, you could argue when you're performing a tracheotomy, you are doing harm, but you are doing harm to save yeah. a life, et cetera. Uh, well, and then so he went from the dogfight in the backyard to uh, factory farming uh, of animals and to veganism. Well, you can't do that 
because I could be opposed to dog fights, I could be opposed to factory farming. In fact, I am opposed to both of those things, and yet I am not a vegan because I, the, the idea that, therefore, you shouldn't eat meat. You are conflating the eating of meat with how we got about getting the meat. Right. Which is why I ask about, you know, roadkill. If I find roadkill, is it immoral for me to yeah. eat it? Um, and you'll get two different answers. So if the caller that I'm talking to gives one answer, and I offer the rebuttals for why that's wrong, yeah. you, you can't take that call and say, here's the sum total of Matt's views on it, because we just went down this one yeah. rabbit hole with the caller. If the caller had said, uh, no, there's nothing immoral about you know, eating roadkill, okay, now we go down another one. So there needs to be a, an actual discussion, and it doesn't quite get there. Well, I, I, I think that it can dovetail really well into um, situational ethics and, and evaluating any moral judgment based on its merits in, in context to what's going on. Oh, well, there's and, one big um, mistake that, that they make that you pointed out early on. You value human life over non-human life. Yeah. You may be wrong to do that. I may be wrong to do that. But that's the current view that we both share. The fact that you value human life more than you value non-human life does not mean that you don't value non-human life. Exactly. It's, it's, I like Beth more than I like you. That doesn't mean I don't like you. I, I hope you like Beth more than you like me. A little bit. But I, I, I like you. I do, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make you awkward. All right. So what I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. What, what I'm probably going to do, and this will partially be based on feedback, uh, my Atheist Debates project, it's patreon.com slash atheistdebates. Every month I put out three videos. Uh, there'll be uh, debates that I do, reviews of debates that I do, specific treatments of arguments for the existence of God, tips and tricks for how to better defend a position, uh, mistakes that we make, mistakes that atheists make. Uh, I will probably, I'm thinking this week or next week, outline my view of morality as it relates to Food. I, that you're going to get hate no matter what. Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah, but at least this way they will have, because what's happening right now is somebody will show a clip from the show. Yeah. And some of the ethical vegans, not, I'm not saying all of you are, are bad or stupid or irrational or whatever, but some of them will take that clip and go, oh, this is, one of them called it absolute retardation. Um, you know, they just start off with the, the name Colin, and this is ridiculous, and this, you know. Yeah, that's how you start uh, a good, well-reasoned argument, right? People who have no demonstrated ability to debate and no <laughs> demonstrated expertise in morality, but they go down that track. So what I'd like to do is at least give them, here's a video. This is what Matt thinks, the how and the why, and that way, if they want to point out flaws in that, that would actually be closer to a discussion between the two of us than pointing out objections to my objections to somebody else's point. Well, and it's, and it just not, it's not that interesting. It's, it's really not. When, when you're following and just doing that, it's, it's much nicer to have an organic call and let it go yeah. down that rabbit trail. And I'm not doing debates um, on Twitter, and I'm not doing back and forth debates on YouTube. You post a video, I post a video. Yeah. Sorry for all of you who absolutely love YouTube culture. I despise that. But um, I'm actually glad you got to plug atheist debates yeah. um, if for for those of you fans of talk heathen who don't know this is Matt Dillahunty uh, he's, uh, he's 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 getting Some there guy. he's working his way up in the atheist community Some um, and uh, yeah anything we can do to help plug him would be fantastic so give him a shot you know take a look <laughs> Um, I do want to try at some point a call. Uh, we have we can, a few yeah, scattered that. calls coming in. We don't know how the quality is going to be, but I do want to give it a shot. So let's try one. Oh, please. I think your phone is in a weird state because that shows calls on one, three, and four, and your phone is oh yeah, super is weird. Great. I think this phone needs to be reset. Oh, let's see. Yeah, you've got two green and two pink buttons. This phone's got to be reset, guys. All right, very cool. So, yeah, just like the old days, huh? Taking, taking things apart, putting it back together. We, we made a lot of changes, and I remember early on um, when we'd get the audio board set up and the phones and everything, you had a digital telephone hybrid, which was, you know, a, a rack mount telos thing with a little okay. potentiometer, so you had to have a jeweler screwdriver to adjust the gain. And the, and the, That's amazing. And so there was a lot of, like, old-school learning that went on. Uh, and the phones were always a problem. The thing I love about doing 
the shows here. Yeah, it's still in that state. We're going to have to have somebody... Oh, oh no, 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 no. It's no, working its, its, its way It's up. doing its resetting thing. If only there was a camera that could show you what we're talking about, then we wouldn't just be pointing at a... At the table? Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's good, TV. So while that's rebooting, do, do whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Show. It is, it is. Um, so I, since I have the time, I want to talk about what's going on in the community as far as the talk heathen community. It is growing. We've had people that want to find avenues to talk to each other and build up. We created a subreddit for people to be able to share articles. We have the Facebook, awesome. which I have done nothing with, which I really need to do more about. Um, but you're welcome to go to it. Um, we are going to be working on talkheathen.com. It does exist. Um, and actually, if we can get the email at the bottom, what we really want to do is we really want to find those great conversations. We've had emails from Christians who want to call in, and I want to have that spot reserved for them because I know it's going to be a great conversation. And so what we really want to do in the long run is keep in touch with callers and even start conversations via email. And so please, if you want to call in, if you have something great you want to talk about, we want to hear it. And so email mail at talkheathen.com. Let's see if we can get it at the bottom on the lower third. Mail at talkheathen.com. And that's M-A-I-L, yes. not M-A-L-E. Well, they could try it, but nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. What? It looks like the phone's up. Oh, man, it does. The phones are exploding, actually. They, they done exploded. Um, let's try Nick in Denver. Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? My connection's a little spotty. Yes. Holy crap, we can yes. hear you, and you sound great. You are already the best caller of the day. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Nick, so what did you want to talk about today? Well, I always hear the discussion about morality, and I've actually been having a discussion with my brother about you know this whole thing and mm -hmm. and he obviously has a lot of objections to my atheism but you know i always find it difficult to talk about morality and matt i know that you've discussed about morality probably more than one time or two but yeah um, more than once today it's, uh, it <laughs> it's something that always seems to come up and i i never have an answer for anything with regards to morality um like what, but, what what's a, what's a question that you don't think you have an answer for um, well, when I'm speaking with my older brother, it's always about, you know, things that happen in the Bible that he tells me context is always important and I have to look at the time and I don't see that as beneficial because if it's wrong to do something, it doesn't matter when it happened, it should just be wrong irregardless of the time. No, absolutely. You're absolutely but, right. Um, you can't justify... Um, I know, Matt's your favorite uh, example is slavery in the Bible. That's right? the one I go to most of the time. And, and you're absolutely right, too, because... Well, no, I'm not going to take your point. Go ahead if you want to present it. No, it's fine. Um, so the, the big thing, Nick, is um, it, when, when they say that you have to look at it in the context and you have to look at it at the time, um, I, I, I think you're, you're, you're starting exactly down the right track, which is, okay, please explain to me under what time and what context would it be moral to own another person? Under what time and what context would it be okay to say that a rape victim has to marry the rapist? How, how is that in any way a, a good thing? How could it ever be a good thing? And, and if they, the most common line that you'll go down is, well, God had to talk to these people in terms that they understood. This was a, you know, an archaic society. Uh, slavery was the norm. So he had to, you know, like gradually soften slavery with the goal of getting rid of it. And that's patently absurd. How yeah. weak ass is their God? If he can tell you not to eat shellfish and mixed fabrics, certainly he can tell you not to own people. Right. They, what kind of weak ass yeah, God I, are they worshiping that can't tell you that, you know, hey, he's going to give you all the instructions about right and wrong, but on this one big thing, it's just too complicated for people to understand. Uh, so he's just going to let them keep having slaves and kind of gradually soften it. Does that make more sense in the context that there is a God who's teaching people about morality, or does it make context in the sense that here's a bunch of people who don't have the first clue about what we understand about morality? Um, who are just making excuses for their own behavior and then attributing it to a god. I, I know which one sounds more plausible to me. Have, uh, have you heard the excuse of, well, where else would these slaves go? You know, they have nothing and... 
exactly. You, what they're, difference they're does that make? Yeah, and, and you, also, I, I, you also heard I, I, bullshit arguments. Either, but. You also heard uh, bullshit responses like that after uh, slavery was made illegal in the United States, right? You know, oh, the slaves right. need their masters. Well, that's just, that's absolutely ridiculous, and that is absolutely immoral. Um, and there's no point where your brother, in this case, is going to sit up and say, gotcha. I mean, you're absolutely right, right to be, it, be comfortable in standing on the point that there are immoral things in there and you should be able to point them out. And if not, um, I always say, use it as an example to model that it's okay not to know and look it up. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, that you really can't get too much further than that. Um, Nick, uh, I, I'm, show, I'm seeing in the notes that you had a, another question. Um, yeah. So I love what do you got? I love the topics on the show. I always enjoy the discussions about morality and everything. But the my my older brother is uh, he's a, a a scientific mind, and you know I had a very long conversation with him, and one of his large cruxes of for why he believes is because of the second law of thermodynamics. And I just thought, well, that's sort of a strange thing to bring up. Yeah. And. I know the topic of morality comes up an awful lot when discussing, you know, beliefs or non-beliefs, but have you ever run into arguments from scientific standards of why people believe of, of closed systems and entropy and all this other stuff? Yes. Yeah, it, it's actually, so the second law has actually become kind of a joke because it's only, you know, young earth creationists would, would use it for a while. And I believe... Um, Answers in Genesis or one of those sites has a list of arguments they don't think Christians should use anymore. Stuff like the level of dust on the moon is just not high enough for, for old earth. Nice. So they go through all these. I'm pretty sure that the, the laws relating to the second law of thermodynamics uh, are also listed there as arguments. That, I, I could be wrong about that. But I don't know how you get to, therefore there must be a God. Because... At best, with any arguments from a scientific standpoint about thermodynamics, if you find something about a scientific understanding of the universe that conflicts with something else, mm -hmm. you don't get to just say, ah, well, therefore the answer is God. Um, it's like if evolution were, were shown to be wrong today, that does not mean that creationism is true. No. You actually actually have, mm -hmm. have to offer positive evidence for creationism sufficient to justify belief. Well, and it also has to meet um, all of the different um, predictive qualities that the other theory had. Yeah. So, I mean, if you take a look at the theory of evolution, um, it has predicted different things across um, archaeology, biology, tons of different fields. And your counter explanation, the creationist explanation, has to be able to account for all of that, too. And I mean, the, the famous joke about this is that, and I don't know if this actually happened or if it's kind of a glurge urban legend type thing, but uh, there was like a, a preacher who was using the second law of thermodynamics and was like, you know, just take a look around at the earth and it couldn't be that old because you would need a big, huge source of constant energy being <laughs> applied to the earth. And, you know, of course, there's the sun right there. Uh, but I, is there a specific about you know, your brother's use of this that is, I don't know, troubling? By the way, uh, if you're not getting good answers from us, go to talkorigins.org and there's an index to creationist claims with scientific responses to each of these things, including, I think, second law thermodynamics. Hmm. Well, no, the main thing that, you know, was his contention was the thought of, well, is the entire universe a closed system and you know i try to look locally at just the sun earth system and i i know it's not closed and yeah. it just feels weird to try to apply something that only seems to hold true for closed systems and somehow apply it to systems that are open and i and you can like you can said, use I can't it see the connection of therefore god must exist because of this so and and i'll probably talk with i'm doing an event with lawrence cross next weekend and i'll i may talk about this a little bit too so thanks for prompting a discussion but one of the things is whether or not the universe is open or closed is irrelevant to whether or not our local system is open or closed. In just the same way that whether or not our local system is open or closed is irrelevant to whether or not the plumbing system in this house, in this building, is open or closed. So if it only applies to closed systems and you at least know that this system is closed, then it applies. Whether or not it applies to the entire universe is a separate issue. 
uh, you don't get to kind of extrapolate and just go, well, mm -hmm. th 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 you do the same thing with, um, with the first cause arguments. Well, there had to be something before this. Well, there had to be something that caused this. Well, there had to be something that caused yeah. this. And they, they put a stop in it as, well, therefore, there is God who is this uncaused cause. And that is actually one step further than we can rationally justify. Uh, at best, we should say we don't know what the actual cause of the universe is and that there may be a multiverse or whatever that is essentially eternal um, so that we don't have to keep going. But Carl Sagan famously, or maybe not so famously, pointed out in response to this attempt from God believers to, to, to put a stop at God because they argue that an infinite regress is impossible and if you don't put a stop here, you would just have to keep going. And Sagan replied, why? Why, or why not keep going? You know, just what, what, the pen that yeah. we should be sticking in it is not, we don't know, therefore God did it. The pen we should be sticking in it is, we don't know, so let's keep looking. Yep. Can't, you, 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 I, I think you said it perfectly. You can't, you can't explain a mystery by appealing to a bigger mystery. You can't just say that, you know, my special invisible friend did it and, you know, that's all. Um, yeah, and, and you do get a whole bunch of other um, pseudo y sounding type explanations that people use to try and prove the existence of God. Um, I, you, talking about young earth creationism is absolutely one of them. Um, you know, the, the, the fun thing is, is if you are talking to your brother about it, get a, hop on a computer, say, let's look it up together. And um, that'll take this, the wind right out of his sails. Really? <laughs> there's, two, there's two other quickie options. Uh, one is your brother could call in to either talk heathen or atheist experience. Um, and then you don't necessarily have to feel on the spot for a discussion. Somebody else can. Although, we're not experts. Uh, no. And he can dismiss us. Here's the thing. Let's assume that the, that the second law of thermodynamics could be used in a way to demonstrate the existence of a god. Let's assume that he's right about that. Don't you think that somebody would have done that and gotten a Nobel Prize, that they'd have won the Templeton Foundation Prize, that they would have won every major award for demonstrating how the second law of thermodynamics demonstrates that there must, in fact, be a God, and then we wouldn't be having these conversations at all. There'd be no reason to call in, um, and yet the bulk of scientists uh, do not... Or the bulk of you know National Academy of Sciences don't believe in a personal God. Uh, most of them that have an understanding and expertise in here don't believe that a God can or should be appealed to as an explanation for an unknown. And the only answer that that someone I'm not going to say your brother would come up with this, but the only answer that I've heard is that there's some massive scientific conspiracy to shut down real proofs of God. And that's bizarre considering the overwhelming majority of people on the planet believe in a God of some form. And if there was proof for it, yes, you would still have deniers, just like you'd have deniers of you know, climate change or whether or not Water vaccines things. cause autism or whatever. You're always going to have moon landing. You're going to have people who deny everything. Uh, but that, th the idea that everybody involved with the Templeton Foundation who are actually working to prove that God exists... Uh, are in on this conspiracy so much that they wouldn't give an award. Hold on, you're, you're not in on the conspiracy? I am not. You, we, 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 we gotta get you a check, man. I mean, when, when, when you get important enough, maybe you, you get famous. It won't matter because I'm not a check. lizard person and the lizard people control everything. Got it, yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that, that's a little helpful, Nick. I, I've, I've used this kind uh -oh. of as a gotcha in the past of, you know, where's the Nobel Prize for proving that God exists? And if it was just something as simple as saying, ah, oh, we all agree on the second law of thermodynamics, we all agree on whether or not we're in an open or closed system, therefore we can make this claim, and therefore God. Uh, man, if it's, if it's that simple that, you know... But it never is. They're, they're, they're going to hold on to it as long as they think it's useful and then ditch it maybe. for the next thing. That's my experience. So, some of them, some yeah. of them will give it up. Um, Hopefully. But we'll see. Yeah, Nick, um, if there's nothing else, I think we're going to head on to the next caller. Well, I yeah, appreciate you taking my call. I'm glad I got a chance to call in. Uh, <laughs> Eric, it's nice to see you're, you're out of Jamie's basement. Um, I'm Dude, glad you escape from there. It's stuffy uh, in there. 
I, you know and, what? Uh, the, I, he's, that that bastard is hiding from me right now. <laughs> he, I'm, I'm, I'm say, say hi to Jamie for me, um, Matt. I can't appreciate you know what you've at least done for me. Uh, I'm sure. Hopefully, I get a chance to talk to you more in the future. Um, yeah, I just I love talking to you guys, listening to you guys, and I'm sure I'll call back again. Well, keep an eye on Facebook because I'm I'm doing like a multi-part world tour. The first eight. We're doing eight stops in Canada, and then we're going to do either a Europe or U.S. leg, uh, and Denver may be among the cities. So keep an eye on on that. Awesome, definitely. And um, also keep in touch with the uh, with the show too. We do have a pretty active group. I'm looking at the live chat, and it is blowing up. Um, hop on the Reddit. I should um, look. Maybe there'd be people on there saying Matt's an idiot. Who? Reddit.com slash r slash talkheathen, uh, talkheathen.com. You can look up talkheathen on Facebook. And um, I really want to get those commu uh, that community aspect going. I want people to be able to contribute and help, especially if they see something that I do that's really dumb and, uh, and want to counter it. I um, started describing a fallacy that was absolutely wrong on episode two, I think. And... Um, Someone right away online was like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? It's like, I, I, I screwed up. So this will make you so, feel better. This is actually one of my favorite um, anecdotes of all time. Russell and I were doing an episode of The Atheist Experience, and a guy calls in and asks us, what do you guys think about the ontological argument? And Russell and I spent probably 10 or 15 minutes, if I had to guess, between the two of us, just going through in great detail and demolishing the cosmological arguments. <laughs> And we got to the end, and he was like, you know, that's great and all, but that's, that's not, not the ontological art. And we were like, what, what, what? And I don't know, you know, it's not like it's something that we didn't know. We, you know, both of us had studied these. It happens. Yeah. We are, we are fallible. Um, and, and, and the funny thing is, is when I read it, I thought, oh, man, this dude's pissed. And I replied, hey, you know what? You're absolutely right. I was wrong. They replied back. Hey, awesome, cool, fan of the show, you know. But <laughs> so you never really know. Um, but Nick, we'd absolutely love to have you in the community. So keep in yeah. touch, right, well, man? I, I appreciate you taking my call. Um, I've recently had just been more open about my atheism, and you guys have all helped a lot with with me getting there. So I appreciate the call. Rock on, thank you, man. Happy to hear it. Yeah, you too. You know, I am. It actually was the atheist experience that convinced me to be an out atheist. Awesome. It was. It was uh, seeing the show and realizing that I was in a safe enough spot in my life that um, I should kind of be an example of what is an atheist, right? We're not baby-eating monsters. Well, not all of us are baby-eating monsters. Um, and people should actually get to see that that's okay. You know, we can still be neighbors. We can still be friends. And um, we can and are good people most of the time. And that's, that's worth it. So I at a minimum, absolutely appreciate what we're... You're at a minimum, we're as good or bad as any other demographic. Yeah. Uh, we may be better in some areas. Well, we may be worse in some areas. True. But enough. we're people. We're, you know, it's, well, it's funny to me to watch, you know, I hear from people who have had difficulties with their families, uh, which I find kind of sad. Uh, on one level, I kind of get it that... Um, like, I could never put my religious belief above my love for family, children, et cetera, um, specifically children. But it's, and I don't even have any children, so maybe, maybe I wouldn't. Jamie is your son, isn't he? Yeah, adopted. Oh, okay, okay. And not, and not in any <laughs> legal sense where he's entitled to any of my stuff should I die. No, he just, uh... Just, you know... He's, he's just there. He's right? adorable. He we, we like to have him around. Yeah, you gotta you gotta tell him to do his laundry. Clean your room. Where's the shirt? Inside out. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that's really awesome. I I want to get to a couple more callers while we can. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, time's going fast. I'll talk faster. No worries. Unless. We will both. Um, let's see. Let me get to caller three. Dustin in Ohio. You are on the air with Eric and Matt. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. This is the second good call. All right. All right you're, you're sounding a little bit better than when I was just listening to it over the phone. You guys kind of sounded like cartoon characters that were drowning. Ah. Hmm. It's like, yeah, like a... Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know that we're streaming on my cell phone Wi-Fi mobile hotspot right now. Uh, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, we lost right. internet, but evidently it's it's back. Uh, but to I don't some think, degree. I don't think we can transition the, the stream, so we'll, the recording should be good. Yeah, hopefully. Awesome. 
All right, so what do you got for us today? Uh, so I'm a recent atheist. Um, Congratulations. Probably, I uh, converted about four months ago or so. Hey, where uh, from? What was, your, what was your religion that you moved out of? Um, it wasn't specifically really, a, I had a, I was a Christian, but I was pretty much non-denominational. Um, okay. But I had a lot of family that were ministers and preachers. Um, it kind of ran in my family. And uh, about six years or so, I uh, decided basically the same thing that uh, you did, Matt. I wanted to find the reasoning that I had for my beliefs um, because my evidence for it was the Bible, that it was the infallible word of God. Therefore, what it says goes, that was my, that was my evidence. But yeah, yeah. I found flaws in it, which means that it can't be the infallible word of God. Therefore, I could not use that as my, uh, evidence, uh, as my evidence anymore. So I went on to find other evidence. And over those six years, I didn't find anything. Um, then about seven or eight months ago, uh, so ago, I started watching the uh, atheist experience. I didn't know anything about it and uh, watched the whole back catalog. And uh, catalog. the arguments that you guys put up, I started using against myself as devil's advocate to see if I could answer them myself. And I couldn't. I decided about four months ago that I could not give good answers as to why I believed. Um, and because of that, Matt, I really wanted to thank you for giving me the tools that I needed to come up with what I did. Um, you know, I did it myself, but I wanted, you gave me the tools for it. And I thank oh, you thank for that. Thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. I'm, I'm glad it works out. Um, I'm sorry? I'm, I'm glad it works out. It's very nice of you to say. But, you know, one yeah, thing I keep reminding people is that you, you did all the actual work. <laughs> and and, and I, I know what's going to happen because I'm listening to you and I know that there's a Christian out there who's listening to you and just said, oh, well, just because you couldn't answer this or you couldn't find anything doesn't mean that there is no God. And, and that's, not what you, that's not what you said. Um, no. And that Christian who's thinking that is absolutely correct. They just don't understand. So let me clarify this. Uh, Dustin, like me, did not reach the conclusion that there is no God and certainly didn't do it because he couldn't uh, come up with good answers on his own. This is about whether or not something is believable. And if you cannot find a good, compelling reason to believe, then you cannot be justified in believing. That doesn't mean exactly. that there is no God. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there is. I don't see any reason to think there is. And if you, uh, viewers, as theists, think you can answer these difficult questions that Dustin couldn't answer, that I couldn't answer, think you can provide the evidence that seemingly nobody else has, has done, you should do that. And then call us. And, and you can call. <laughs> call us. Give it to us. We want to hear. Um, right. Yeah, and, and it's, it's not just atheism. Um, a lot of that tool set is being rational, being a skeptic. And um, definitely, if uh, you haven't read up on skepticism, it sounds like you have, but um, definitely check it out because it will give you the tools to be able to navigate the world in a, in a, in a meaningful way. Um, right. Welcome to the club, man. Rock on. I'm happy thank to hear you, it. Um, <laughs> second thing What's I wanted up? to talk about was um, the importance of being out about it. Yeah. Um, yes. At my job, we recently uh, had a, uh, one of my employees that I work with. He um, recently started going to a church for um, drug-related reasons. Um, and he's gotten very heavily into it started wearing his cross necklace at work. Um, he started bringing in his Bible and reading passages during work. Um, you know, things like that. Uh, it kind of made me a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm not the kind of guy who likes to start stuff at work, so I didn't really bring anything up. Sure. Um, so instead, what I've done is I went on the Evolve Fish website, and I got the, uh, the Circle A necklace, and I started wearing that at work without saying anything. And it has started conversations. Nice. Um, you know, he, people coming up saying, hey, what does that stand for? And I tell them, it's, you know, it's, it's atheism. I don't believe in a God. So with that, it's let people know at work that they're sharing a space with people that don't believe the same thing that they do. And if I'm not going to make a big deal about it, maybe they shouldn't either. And let's at least respect each other's beliefs. Well, and if your work is big enough, I can guarantee you're not the only one. And if you are in a place in your life where you can do that, 
you get to be that yeah. person for the people who can't. And, yeah. I, and, and my answer to that question is that, is that there are so many people that are in really, really tough, tight-knit communities uh, that are highly religious. Um, and on top of that, there are a bunch of people that just aren't really religious at all, but they never heard about it. There are a lot of people who still think that atheism is devil worship. And it's Absolutely. about education, it's about communication. And being able to take that on um, really does mean so much to so many other people that can't. Uh, you can be that beginning for somebody. You can, you can be that one person that somebody knows that goes, hey, I'm not alone in the world. You know, and right. that is powerful, man. That is so powerful. And, and I like it, your you, solution. You, uh, you know, as long as somebody's reading the Bible, whatever, at work, as long as they're not doing it when they're supposed to be working, that's not a problem. You get break times, you're allowed to do that. Uh, it lets people know that that we can fight against uh, church-state separa separation violations or the separation of religion and government um, about things being in a public place and not actually minimize or limit somebody's individual right to exercise, but by not making a big deal out of it. Here's, what, here's what's going to happen eventually, because I've heard this story from other people as well. Somebody's going to ask you what your necklace is about, yeah. and, and you're going to say, oh, it's representative of atheism, I, I don't believe in a God. This is going to annoy somebody and freak them out enough where they're going to say, well, why do you have to shove it in everybody's face? Yeah. And, and that is, and it, it, this is not what you're doing. And if you, when they say that, you can probably point to their cross ne necklace and just <laughs> not say a word. Uh, because yeah. that, that has been the way it goes. It's, it's funny because people do this, why won't you atheists shut up? And for years we've done the Atheist Experience show and people are like, why would you need a, a show to talk about this? Or preachers would call in and just want to preach. And I'm like, how many religious shows are there on TV? And we, we have one atheist show, and you guys think that's too many. I drove, I did a 3,500-mile road trip with my wife every year for Christmas. We drive from Austin to Kansas City to St. Louis, um, sometimes out to Kentucky, but then down to Cleveland, Tennessee, and then out to Alpharetta, Georgia, and then down back Damn. home across I-10. Because our family's kind of spread out. We take two weeks. We want to visit everybody. Cool. There was a spot just outside of Cleveland, Tennessee, where we were on back roads, and I would guess the average plot of land that people have out there is probably between seven and 10 acres. So you're gonna have like a 22 acre thing and then you're gonna have a few houses, but there's not very many people. We counted in this, or we kind of half-ass counted because it became obvious. We were driving along this road, we only had to go about 20 miles. Baptist church, Baptist church, Baptist church, Baptist church. Here's a Baptist church with a sign on the other side of the road pointing to another Baptist church that's a mile <laughs> down the road. Here's about, not Baptist, Lutheran, Method, Methodist, Catholic, Baptist, 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 Baptist. There, is not, there are not enough people in that area to require that many Baptist churches. And at some point I'm gonna do a video talking about what actually has happened here. Um, there are not atheist organizations at that level and no. there never will be. You can take that prediction to the bank because by the time we would need that many buildings and things, religion's gone and we're no longer worried about it. We're just moving on with our, our life. Yeah, we're um, gonna show, for sure. But yet, having one atheist organization, oh, why won't you atheists just shut up? Well, I'll tell you why we won't shut up. Because we live in a world where the overwhelming majority of people believe in something for which we see no good reason to believe. And not only do they believe it, but they get preferential privilege pr treatment from the government and from everybody in surrounding culture who believe something similar but not the same. So the Catholics and the Baptists who would war against each other now are allies in opposition to secularists. And curiously, uh, despite the fact that there's all these other churches and, and views and beliefs, they can come together to say, nope, you can't marry who you want to marry. Uh, nope, you can't do this. Yes, you have to do this. And they, when you take away their privileged position, they cry um, persecution. Yep. 
Oh, how dare you, you know, make me equal to everybody else. Help, help, I'm being oppressed. If you're hitting somebody over the head with a stick and I take the stick away, I am not persecuting you. I am keeping you from persecuting somebody else. And that's why there's the atheist experience. That's why there's talk heathen. That's why there's American Atheist, the Freedom mm. from Religion Foundation. Yes. Uh, belief beyond, or uh, Foundation Beyond Belief, trying to do good works and make the world a better place. So when somebody comes up to you and says, uh, you know, why do you got to be out? You already knew all this, but I needed to sermonize for a moment. What he said. I, I, everything that he said, I, yeah. Yeah, I said it too. <laughs> um, let's see. If you, have, uh, if you have anything else you want to ask, um, now's the time before we move on to another person. Do you have uh, anything else? We might have lost him. I think we my... totally lost him. Damn. Well, Dustin, we're sorry That's that we lost him. That's all right. You. That's all right. Um, That's what happens when you have me on to rant. So, hey, Matt, that's my mother on the line. Oh, man. <laughs> um, take we'll it. take that. Uh, no, I'll, I'll take that on the air. Go ahead. Um, but uh, the first thing is I want to do bring, I want to bring the uh, tone a little lighter before that call. And um, I want to say that uh, I got a couple messages uh, from people saying that they hate my haircut. And so I decided that uh, if the fans want me to cut it off, I will. And if they don't, that they won't. And so I put a little thing. If you go to the little eye up here, there's a little poll. And I think if we can get 200 people to, uh, to vote on that by the end of the episode, I will have it cut by next week. Cut, cut how? You know? Like, you're, you're not, like, doing this. I don't know. You know, I think if somebody donated and, uh, did, and uh, requested that, I might get in touch with them and ask them. You know, we used to joke that it was a requirement to, to be on the Atheist Experience that you had to be bald with a goatee, because that was me, that was Ashley, uh, that was Russell for a bit. Uh, <laughs> that was, uh, oh, man, I don't... But, of course, that would have been unfair to... To Jan and Tracy, and you know, because you know what, they could shave their heads, but the, and not, they, not a goatee. You'd have to uh, start taking could, hormones, or just, and you no, know, you could you could pen it on. Oh yeah, right? a little sharpie. It's right, an, it doesn't need to be like a whole. Maybe it doesn't need thing. to be real. It could how be. How much donation are you looking for pack? before you go bald? <sighs> oh man, because you said two hundred people, but they could all donate a penny, and you wouldn't get that much. That's true. That's true. You should set like a dollar amount. All right. If we can get, I think 500 is easy enough with the amount of fans and people that are watching. If we can get $500, I'll shave my head. No. You are full of shit. No. Okay, I won't. I won't. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> he starts pulling out hundreds like a boss. Jeez. Yeah, no. I, th I think if we can raise five hundred. By the way, I'm not. I'm not rich. The reason that's there is because my credit card got stolen. Look, I'm not here to judge. All right. My credit card got stolen, <laughs> and I'm waiting for the new one. So I have to carry cash for a few days. Holy crap! But yeah. Yeah. Don't get mugged. That's the whole, whole reason <laughs> I went there. It was like boom, money. All right. What All do right. we got? Okay. Um, I'm gonna do this. Hey, mom. Hey, Eric. Hi, hey. hi, Eric's mom. I'm Matt. Good, good. <laughs> are are we on? We we are live. We are live. Oh, hey. Hey, what did you want to talk about? <laughs> well, yeah, you're good. Actually, answer. first, first, I wanted to say for other parents out there that have um, sons and daughters that are atheists, it's okay to agree to disagree. And um, for our relationship, I couldn't be prouder of you, Eric. You're you're. You have a path, and you're you're going for it, and and I just want you to know that Dad and I are behind you all the way, and um, we're enjoying the show. And Matt, thank you so much for stepping in, and uh, just very awesome. Um, Thanks. And just the one thing I kind of wanted to put out there is for other parents, how what would be a good thing for them to be able to come alongside and support their kids? even if they have a faith themselves and they believe in God. I, I think you are a wonderful example of that. Yeah, you're, you're so sweet, I'm not going to even nitpick over the agree to disagree <laughs> thing, which is a personal pet peeve, and it doesn't apply to the way you used it. It only applies in arguments. Um, I think what you, you did is a great example because people will call in and say, you know, 
I'm an atheist and I have kids and my spouse is not. And so how do we go about raising them? And I don't have kids and I'm not an expert in child rearing at all. Uh, and, and so the advice I've constantly given them is just, you know, don't worry about it. Tr try to avoid direct indoctrination, but love your kids. Be willing to say, I don't know when you don't know. Mm -hmm. And don't just finish with, I don't know. Say, I don't know, but let's see if we can find out to encourage in them a sense of discovery. Uh, and that also empowers them as individuals that lets them know that they can be who they are, that the fact that they are convinced of something or not convinced of something isn't going to be the foundation upon which the parents determine whether or not that child's worthy of their love or their respect. Um, and no matter how gruff or antagonistic I am on shows or in debates, um, I think anybody, any of my debate opponents, almost any one of them except maybe Cy, uh, would tell you that while I have strong disagreements and strong words about the positions themselves, that is separate from how I feel about the people and the individuals. I mean, Blake Junta and I have debated three different times. I love Blake. He's, he's a great guy. He's boneheadedly wrong on an, any number of things, but we get along great. And if I can do that with debate opponents who I don't know, who aren't family, then I don't understand why so many families fall apart. Well, I think I kind of partially yeah. do. I think in some cases, there are fears that some religious views prey upon and amplify. And if one person in the relationship um, is uncomfortable by the views that the other person's expressing, uh, anger and ostracizing are defense mechanisms to protect themselves and their beliefs. And so I think you've already done a great job here of saying, you know, hey, we may not disagree, but you're my kid and you're awesome and I love you and you're doing good stuff and we're here for you. And I think if everybody did that, there'd be a lot, well, lot I, less uh, <laughs> drama surrounding this I, I, I believe in you don't argument. And we, we talked about this a good bit. Um, uh, just for fans who obviously weren't privy to our conversation, there was a lot of crying. There was a lot of um, just wanting to understand each other. Um, and you, you remember what it was like at church. Um, it was brutal. People, if, if they didn't fit in, they were out. And um, I think we need to build a better world than that. And I'm so happy that you're proud of me. And... I want to work to be the kind of person that you're proud of. So, <laughs> you guys are going to make me cry, and I don't cry. Do you make me cry? Okay. <laughs> I will. I will say this. Uh, I will say this, and that's my folks and I um, enjoy a really good relationship. Although it, they're they're not proud of me or what I do. They think I'm working for Satan and leading people to hell, and that is a real problem for them. But. They also know that I'm a decent person and that they love me and that we, I mean, they come down and stay with us. I visit them, you know, at Christmas. We talk all the time about things unrelated to this. So we've found a new way to make it work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think there are areas in which my parents are proud. They're certainly not proud of this, but that speaks to their issues from the particular version of Christianity that they've adopted and or invented. Um, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I see what, what you're in Eric's dynamic. It's fundamentally different from my dynamic with my mom, and yet we still have a good relationship and, and get along. Um, I've seen, I've helped kids who have been thrown out of the house, 16-year-olds who are like, oh, you're an atheist? Well, you can't live with us anymore, and we have to find them new places to live. There is, that is the, the very thing that I stand in opposition to and the reason why I do what I do. If religious parents across the board were even as okay with this as my mom is, and she's not, but able to maintain a relationship, I don't think there would be that, it wouldn't be as huge of a deal. I would still that care about me. the beliefs. I would still care about the beliefs, I would still care about what's true, I would still care about the philosophical arguments, the scientific evidence behind certain things. But the dynamic between people has to be one of the primary things that we look at. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that I'm still able to interact with my mom when I know so many other people who aren't. Yeah. And to see even, even better dynamics demonstrated between the two of you uh, makes me incredibly optimistic. So I'm glad you called. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. Thank you, Mom. All right. I'll let you guys get to another caller. 
Love Sounds you, Eric. Good. Love you too. Um, I love your mom too. I know, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I. What's when, for dinner? When I came, <laughs> when I came out as an atheist, I um, I had no idea how she was going to react. Um, she was still really in the church, and I thought, you know, I, I I want to live my life honestly and openly, and I was in a safe enough place that I could. And when I talked to her, she got quiet, and she goes, "You know, I don't love you any less, right?" And I had no, I like, it just blew me away. So what, and, what strikes uh, me about all this, we talk about it in terms of coming out. If you took the word atheist and scrubbed it from the entire conversation we just had and replaced it with gay, you would have the same dynamics where there are parents who are, oh, no, I'm not going to have a gay kid, you're out. There are others who I'm not going to like or appreciate your lifestyle, but I'm not going to completely ostracize you. And then there are parents who are going to say, I'm going to love you no less, uh, even if I don't understand it, don't agree, whatever else, I'm, you're still my son. And then there are some who just flatly embrace it. You see that same yeah. dynamic across the board. And, and, and really, I think the big common piece there is uh, the best advice for parents is love your kids. I mean, they didn't choose to be born to you. <laughs> um, and they didn't choose the circumstances in their lives. And they depended on you. And they still do depend on you. And they look up to you. And that's up to you to model that love because that's you getting to show them how they can give that love in the future. It's a, it's a good time here to make a couple quick points. Yeah. One is something that uh, Jen Peoples said years ago and I've echoed it over and over again. And that is from her perspective and mine, you are family if you act like family. I don't care if you're blood related or not. There are people who I'm not close kin to, just friends, who are my family even though there are members of my blood relatives who are not my family. Yeah. And I didn't end relationships with people based on that. They ended them with me because they couldn't handle yeah. this sort of disagreement. But if you are in one of those situations where you found yourself in a position where you've been ostracized from your family, whether you, you know, you've come out as a non-believer and it's caused great problems, there are organizations out there for you. There's Recovering From Religion, there's the Secular Therapist Project. Um, there are a number of other organizations that will work with you to make sure that we are building communities for people to land in when they leave religion because even if you don't lose your entire family, you are going to lose some of your social network. It's not like I can walk into a Baptist church and say, hey, I was a Baptist 25 years ago. Uh, will you, will, you know, my wife's in the hospital. Will you cook me a meal and, and, and watch my kids? Actually, as I say that, there are churches I could walk in and do that, and there are people that would be happy to do it. And I know a number of pastors in town that if I reached out to them right now yeah. and said, holy crap, I'm, my, my car is dead, I've lost all, all my income, everything's bad, they would rally to do this. And it's not because they're Baptists or Presbyterians or Methodists. It's not because they believe in God. It's because they're good people. That's right. And I would, one of the things I'd like to encourage even believers is don't give your God or your religion credit for being a decent person. Please. Because you can be a decent person independent of your, your God and independent of your religion. Yeah. It's not like your belief in God makes you a good person. It may be that you have picked the God that you believe in based on the characteristics that you think it wants to inspire in you mm -hmm. because you already have those characteristics, because you do want to go out. And, you know, my wife made 500 hats for the homeless. Um, there's Atheists Helping the Homeless. There's Humanists at Work. There's other organizations. The, the Ramp Project. Um, you, know, you know, people that I met through those organizations, um, I, I don't think I've met so many giving people just like that yep. in my life than I've met in this last year getting to know people in, in those projects. It is unbelievable. And um, no, you're, abso you're absolutely right. I'm always uh, right. No, That's why well, you guys invited me on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, we want to give you some exposure so you, yeah. can, you can get uh, Who you can is get this famous. new bald guy? Yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll make Somebody it. should give him a show or you'll, something. You'll make it. It's all right. <laughs> um, By the way, uh, one of, over the years, I, I've not been uh, incredibly self-promotional. It annoys me to do so. And I always make sure that when I'm talking about the atheist experience when I'm out, uh, that I talk about our show and, you know, it's not just the Matt show and me, which is another reason, going back to the initial discussion, sometimes I don't want to take a call because it's all about me yeah. and not about the bigger issues. Uh, but my agent would beat me around the head and shoulders if I didn't point out that you can go to mattdillonhoney.com or Pangburn <laughs> Philosophy. I'm doing three events in the next month with Lawrence Krauss and Sam Harris and then the Canadian tour and 
Canada? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's America's hat. They we're, love it when you call it that. We're going to Canada. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, even for this, like, it, it is Talk Heathen. This is Jamie and I's show. Yeah. Um, but I love the solidarity of you coming in here and, and, and saying, hey, this is a sister show of the atheist experience, and this is um, something that we're growing, and I, we're so appreciative of it. We really I want are. there to be as many shows as there are people to talk and listen. Well, wait until I'm established before you say that. I, I, well, <laughs> I've been saying, saying it for years. There were other organizations who were like, we want to do a show like The Atheist Experience. What do we need to do? And we told them. Here, do it, yeah. And some of them succeeded and some of them didn't. So your job is to succeed. I'm down. Let's do it. And that, don't forget you can donate to possibly have him cut his hair. I, and, um, no, seriously, if you press the I that should be right here, it will... <laughs> Right there. That, yeah, that uh, um, I, I am opening up a vote, and I think 200 would probably get me to cut it off. A big donation will get me to shave it. I dyed my beard pink for $10,000. That is amazing. For Camp Quest. By the way, another organization we should talk about. Yes. Uh, if, you're, if you're tired of having to deal with uh, the religious aspect of the Boy Scouts and the anti-gay aspects of the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts are better, and I believe Girl Scouts are now accepting boys. There's also Scouting for All, and if you want your kids to go to summer camps that aren't going to shove religion down their throat, look up Camp Quest. It's an uh, amazing opportunity. I love Camp Quest. I I've, I've, can't wait to see it, and I really want to volunteer now that I live out here to try that. Um, yeah. So I actually had like five things to say, and then I started listening. I just lost you it. You had completely. five things to say, but I talked. Yeah, well, and I just, woof. That's, that's all right. That's We're going to get there. That's how it works. You know, give me, give me time. I'll, I'll get there. I'm learning it. Um, I do want to get to Shana in North Carolina. Huh? Shana, you're, on the, air, you're on the air with Eric and Matt. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Excellent. Doing well. Thank you for waiting for so long. What did you want to talk about Absolutely. today? Absolutely. Um, thank you for the show, first of all, everybody involved. Hi, Eric. Hi, Matt. Hi. I love the show because it really helped me articulate some of the ideas that I had about, um, you know, being an atheist. I wasn't able to put it in words to a lot of people in the way that they could understand. All I could get out was, uh, this doesn't make sense. And this is why no one can understand, but um, since watching the show, I can definitely articulate better, and it's great. Good. Good. So Happy that we that. could help. Absolutely. Awesome. So, so uh, what, what did you want to share with us today? I want to um, talk about the standards of how you're supposed to act according to the Bible. If you are talking to someone who takes the Bible literally, at best, they're asking you to model your life and your behaviors off of something that has only happened once that someone happened to write down, you know, because these stories, these miracles happen once, you know. And then if you take someone who thinks of the Bible as, you know, parables and metaphors and allegories, then they're asking you to do something that no one in the history of people has ever done. And that's so yeah. frustrating when I see my loved ones trying to well, hold themselves to these standards that existed only once or not at all, you know. Well, they, they, they are cherry-picking when it comes to living up to the standards because if they're going to say that I'm living up to the standards that I'm literally taking from the Bible, then you are going to have no problem meeting those standards. I, I, um, I'd, caution you, I'd caution you a little bit. Uh, is it Shana or Shana? Uh-huh. Shana or Shana? The Shana. Shana. I'd caution you a little bit because strictly as an argument, whether or not something has happened once or, or never before is irrelevant to whether or not it's a good thing. So somebody, uh -huh. yeah. somebody could be asking you to do something or, or, or do, a, do a particular behavior, and whether or not anybody else has ever done it before or not is, has no bearing on whether or not what they're asking you to do is good or not. Yeah. So you, one, one thing to discuss is how do we go about determining whether or not an action that you're encouraging me to take or a position, you're, whether or not belief is warranted and whether or not that action would be good. Uh, because as yeah. we move forward, there's going to be new moral dilemmas presented to us, um, you know, with respect to cloning and identity and all these other things. And if if we were to begin with, well, nobody's ever dealt with this before, that doesn't matter. What matters is can we determine whether or not there's a code action here? Uh, mm -hmm. And and there's been a lot of bad things done that were that somebody would say are a good thing. And so they could say, oh, you know, for years we've had slaves. Everybody had slaves. We had all slaves. You should have slaves. Having slaves is moral. That's an appeal to popularity, which yeah. is, uh, 
That's independent of whether or not it's good. Well, see, now you, now, now, now you took the high road. I was going to just point out all the really crappy things that they did in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if you want to be snippy like me, you can bring up um, Abraham <laughs> trying to kill his son Isaac. You can bring up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking into the fire instead of, I mean, really, is it going to kill you? You know, if, if you're looking at, Matt, if somebody pointed a gun at you and said, uh, do you accept Jesus into your heart? Yes. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, totally, totally. I, you know, my father had filial spirit sancti. I'm in. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> I, that, <laughs> like, there's so much that uh, that goes on in there. There's so much murder. There's so many things. Um, so Lot um, giving up his daughter or his daughters, right, to the uh, to the rapists instead of uh, letting them. Uh, yeah. Letting them get the angels oh, yeah. in his home, That's right? A terrible that, story. It, it is, it is. And then afterward, <laughs> and then afterward, the idea of they had to get him drunk so they can sleep with him, right? Oh, that happened. Um, that, I mean, I mean, there are so many examples in there that they have to be cherry picking. And yeah. Matt has the the concrete. This is how you get to it. Um, but mm -hmm. if somebody is saying, "Hey, you know, I just really want to live up to the standards in the Bible." That takes a Why? whole lot of scaffolding to get between the gaps that they're making. <laughs> yeah, the um, first thing you've got to do is demonstrate why I should care what the Bible says about anything. Yeah. Uh, because, mm -hmm. because something is either right or wrong, independent of whether or not it appears in a holy book or in somebody else's lists of do's and don'ts. That, mm -hmm. the, Bible, the Bible's view does not become the standard for right or wrong until you demonstrate first that it should be the standard for right and wrong. Yeah. And I think it's easy to demonstrate that it should not be the standard, but not, you know, Lot and his daughters, uh, rape stuff, the fact that women are property and second-class citizens, slavery, mm -hmm. uh, hey, I'm your God and you are my chosen people, so I want you to go slaughter everybody else around the, and just take, take their shit. And, and, and tricking them at times, getting them yeah. drunk at times, uh, having, all of them, having all of them submit to you, uh, get circumcised, <laughs> and then while they're all holding their circumcised uh, wounds, yeah. going in and slaughtering them all, because that's let me, totally Let me collect cool. 400 foreskins, because, you know, well, I, what it's do you a kink, do? I guess. What, what do you do with 400 foreskins? You, you buy a wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wonder. That's what right? David did. He bought a wife with it. Can, do you fry them up? Like... <laughs> These terrible things are in um, Bibles that you will give children. Like the cover will have like precious moments or yep. some kind of like rainbow and lamb on the cover, and that story's in it on the bridge. No cuts to the language. That story is in there. Yeah. A, I gave a talk at the last, uh, the last American Atheist Convention, or the most recent, um, that was all about the way people have manipulated Bible stories in order to tell them to extremely small children. I actually have an mm -hmm. antique book ca called mm -hmm. Bible Stories as Told to Very Young Children or something like that. And I pulled some of the stories out of there to show what it omitted, uh, how it painted this, you know, the, the Abraham and Isaac mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's appalling. And the, the thing I came up with years ago was if somebody thinks the Bible is a good book, I asked them if they would be willing to let me read Bible stories of my choosing to their children. <laughs> right. No, nobody ever says yes, and that's good because if they did, I would have to balk because I care enough about their children that I wouldn't actually do the thing they're afraid I would do. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think the best that we can do is make sure that if they're, gonna, if they're going to have that book that they don't edit it. You know, let them yeah. let them keep it in its entirety. I think the more insidious group is, um, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, for example. Um, they edit yeah. out entire sections of the Bible. They have to have their own Bible. They call it the Silver Sword, and it is okay. just oh, huge omissions of things and and rewrites. And that is way harder to pin down because they can oh, be like, oh yeah. hey, we have new light. Uh, we actually need to re-edit the Bible to uh, take out the thing that you just pointed out, and uh, now we're not wrong. And you don't even have to go to the Old Testament, although uh, it's good to. Uh, you can stick with the New, New Testament. You can say, hey, does, doesn't the Bible say turn the other cheek? Yes, it does. We're all in favor of that. Oh, okay. Uh, are you turning the other cheek when you take action A, B, and C? But by the way, the Bible also says sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. Why haven't you done that? Why is your church so fucking opulent? Uh, why, uh -huh. why is it that, you know, we have these arguments about whether or not people 
fundamentally deserve health care. And you are going to, oh, I love Jesus, and Jesus tells me, go forth and teach all under the nations of all the world that, you know, the Christ is coming and giving the good news and blah, 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 but I'm not selling my belongings and giving it to the poor. I'm not going to, yeah. uh, I'm not actually going to turn the other cheek. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, have my lawsuits and, uh, you know, anyway, rant yeah. number four. And you are, and you are more moral than Jesus, even. I mean, you take a look at Jesus yeah. uh, um, performing miracles, and uh, the beggar woman comes up and asks for a miracle, and he says, "Why would I throw pearls before swine?" Yeah. Because she's not in the in group. Hey, here's right? a thought: Why would you heal that person if you're Jesus yeah. and you really want to kind of give demonstration of your power? Why would you? Why would you heal this person and not just heal everybody? No, right. there, there is no more blindness. Like the. Like the flashy thing in Men in Black, I just fucking flash. Everybody is fine now. Yep. <laughs> see, see that that that. Don't that don't heal. Awesome. Don't spit on some dirt and put it on one person's eyes to heal their blindness. No. Heal everybody's <laughs> blindness. Yeah. And all of a sudden now, there's not as much discussion about whether or not a miracle was performed. <laughs> oh, True enough. Gosh. Um, <laughs> hope, I, I hope that gave you a little bit of uh, a little something to uh, take back with you if uh, you're yeah, seeing that absolutely. question. Good. <laughs> I think we both ranted absolutely. a good bit on that yeah. one. <laughs> Thanks for letting me, letting me ramble, Shauna. Thank you. Uh, Shauna, I, I see that you've been active in the live chat. Um, keep being active. I'm seeing tons and tons of activity. Um, definitely check us mm -hmm. out. Post on our subreddit, r slash talk heathen our facebook facebook.com slash talk sure heathen um, email us especially if you do have other topics like this this was a wonderful one email us <laughs> mail at talkheathen.com we really do want to set up these conversations ahead of time so we can have nothing but killer content from beginning to end and um, awesome. yes so thank you and uh, well thank you guys hope to hear from you soon all right thank you so much thank you all right. Um, I think we have time for one more call. Sure. All right. Um, let's take Dustin in Ohio. You're back. Hey, yeah, I'm back. Hey. Uh, for some reason, the call dropped. I don't know. We're very sorry we lost you. Please continue. Uh, yeah, just basically continuing on, just the idea that uh, if you have the ability to come out as an atheist, because not everybody can, um, you know, it, it helps break the stereotype that we're all just devil worshipers or all we want to do is yell at people and say, oh, you believe in this. Oh, you must be stupid. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, the more of us that come out and are civil about it, the more it takes down that stereotype. That's, that's absolutely true. I've been to Matt's house, not one dead baby. Not one. That you know of. Right. <laughs> and, and I appreciate that. So there's been a lot of talk in the years, you know, that I've been involved in the, in the broader atheist movement about uh, tone, about, mm -hmm. you know, firebrand versus diplomat. And the thing that I've pointed out repeatedly is that I can on any given occasion be a firebrand or a diplomat mm -hmm. depending on my mood, depending on how, what sort of... Uh, return I'm getting from the person I'm having a conversation with, uh, depending on what I think is going to be most effective. There are times when I think ridicule is of ideas, not necessarily people, is deserved and possibly the best course of action. But one of the things that I love about the fact that I'm here on Talk Heathen this week is I'm, I, I do the Atheist Debates Project, but I'm not saying I am the ultimate authority on what one should do in debate. Uh, I want there to be different perspectives. I would like nothing more than, than to have Eric uh, and Jamie uh, make the Talk Heathens so popular that the Atheist Experience is the least popular of, of these particular shows. Just because there needs to be different voices taking different tacks. If everybody is a diplomat all the time, if everybody's, oh, I understand, and I understand that this is important to you, I, I think it, that, that that will not result in what we actually want. Because... It puts you in a position where you're a little bit more willing to be kind of rolled over. Uh, we're not going to push yeah. back too hard on religious privilege. So I think there needs to be a mix. I think there needs to be groups and organizations that are reaching out to people, giving them places to land, building up the, the resources to support people and build strong communities. I also think there needs to be perhaps somebody I don't like who's a complete jackass who's out there on YouTube mocking uh, religion and perhaps even mocking the religious, although maybe maybe we're going too far. 
but you need different voices doing it in different ways because people believe for different reasons yep. and they're going to give it up for different reasons. And the person who hates me and does not want to engage in this sort of nitpicky philosophical, oh, that's a fallacy, um, they might never benefit from anything I've said. But something I've said could benefit somebody who has a different temperament and, and argumentation style and they can take that and move on down to actually engage with and address what that person needs to hear. It may also be the case that the, I've talked about three on a match is bad luck. The first time you hear something, oh, no, 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 that's just weird. And the second time it's, oh, I've heard that before, but it's weird. And the third time, oh yeah, I've heard that before, it's a pattern. So the first time you meet an atheist, the second time you meet an atheist, the third time you meet an atheist, the first time you hear this argument debunked, the second time, mm -hmm. the third time, you need that. So I might say something to a caller and it has no real effect on them, but it still lives in their brain. I had that, call, that thing with Matt. Yeah. Eric could then have a conversation with that same caller, say exactly the same thing I did, but because there's a different dynamic between the two, because he has a different personality from me, because they've heard it for now a second time, it's going to have a different impact, which is why we need more voices, more shows, more communities. That's the way you get to atheist normalcy. That's the way you eliminate religious privilege. And that's the way you make... All those people who go to church every Sunday who actually don't believe, including many of the preachers who are members of the clergy project, yeah. you build a world that it is now safe for them to say, yeah, I don't need to go to church anymore and pretend like I believe something that I really don't uh, because now there's not as much risk. We've got to build a world where saying I don't believe in a God is not a, a career death sentence or a family death sentence. It, it is now just, oh, cool, you're one of those people. In the same way that while uh, Protestants and, and Catholics used to war or Jews and Catholics, now it's, oh, you're one of those. We, we don't, yes, there are some pockets of KKK style Christians who despise Catholics and Jews, uh, but they're pretty irrelevant. They, they are a minority. Mostly you get ecumenical councils of, yeah. oh, we're going we're gonna to fight it out on the softball court rather than in the arena of ideas. To the, the next week we're playing First Presbyterian and those guys are awful at softball, but we're never going to discuss our theological differences because we already know and uh, neither one of us can make our case. You know, I actually was in one of those softball leagues. Me too. <laughs> I, that's how I, I've got and, a torn rotator cuff from pitching. Oh, and then um, actually personal experience, it was... Uh, he, seeing my religious views mocked openly mm -hmm. in a very derogatory fashion pushed me to study more of the Bible. And that got me out of the, the, the church. It got me to question and go, well, maybe I don't understand it. And then it was seeing a much kinder voice um, that led me to go, hey, you know, maybe this is where I need to go. And that r really brought me to the atheist movement. So... And this You're is all right. stolen uh, in many ways from the gay rights movement. And, and pointing out, and this is this pointed out by somebody else, this is not me at all. I just took it and went this direction earlier. Um, when people were working for equality, uh, not just marriage equality, but for gay rights and to end oppression, mm -hmm. you needed gay pride marches, people out there in assless chaps, you know, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. Mm -hmm. And you needed the dapper, dressed up, Ellen DeGeneres. Gay lives. lawyer who can go on TV and explain the legal aspect. You needed both sides working. And then the third component of that was you needed people to be real to realize that their nephew is gay, that their child is gay, that their neighbor is gay, that the people mm -hmm. that they like are this. And the same thing has to happen within the secular community. Once you figure out that the neighbor, the best neighbor in your neighborhood, the one that keeps their yard nice and doesn't throw loud parties like my asshole neighbors did last night, um, <laughs> that that person is a godless heathen, it fundamentally changes how you, you look at that. It does. It does. Um, uh, really quick, uh, before I miss it, uh, Mark, our producer, uh, one hour and 19 minutes is when uh, we got that really awesome clip from Matt. Let's. Uh, oh, I thought let's, you let's... were going to tell him that was the time when I said fuck and they were going to edit it out. Oh, no, no, we're keeping the fuck. I just want to clip you out of context as a We're talking over track. Dustin again. Sorry, Dustin. <laughs> Did Dustin. we lose you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we have too much fun here. Um, uh, yeah, anything else you wanted to add before we uh, wrap up the show? Uh, one final thing. Um, What's up? The other day, I was walking around the house, and my little cousin, who's she's 11 years old, saw my necklace, and she said, "Hey, is that the uh, is that the Avenger symbol?" I said, "No, it's 
it means I'm atheist. Yes. She said, yes, it is the Avenger symbol. <laughs> <laughs> she said, um, please don't wear that. I don't want people to hate you. Oh. Oh. Well, yeah. That kind of hit hard for me. You know, the fact that you are wearing it, you're doing just that small part that we're all doing to make the world a place that that won't happen. What, I mean, what did you say back to her? Oh, man. I told her that the reason I'm wearing it is because I want let pe uh, people to know that we live in a place where people have different ideas. And if we're going to share this space, then we better treat each other the way that we want to be treated. And she gave me a high five. Yeah. Absolutely. But... We wearing it, I, I, I'm, I'm troubled by the fact that she, at her age, is already familiar enough to know that, oh, people might hate you for this. Um, I, yeah. I think your answer was awesome. Anything that lets her know that I'm wearing this so that people who hate people who think like me are put in a position where they have to reconcile, I'm a good person and they recognize this, but I'm supposed to hate you. And that makes it very difficult for them to hate other people who share my views. Yeah. Right. So it's not just important to come out to the adults in your community, you, to let the kids that you know, know that it's okay. So Absolutely. that they don't grow up with the idea that someone like you is a bad person just because of your beliefs. Dustin, you brought that conversation full circle. I absolutely I, love it. I think that's a wonderful way to end. I give you a full-on amen, and uh, <laughs> I, I agree. That's a perfect way to close it out. Yeah, thank you so much for calling. Cool. Dustin, keep in touch. Um, definitely email us. I would love to continue conversations when Jamie and I are back. We will be back, by the way, next week. Um, I'll, I'll finish this up. Uh, Dustin, thank you so much. Um, keep in touch on the Reddit, on Facebook. Oh, I will. Um, all that other good stuff, our website. We definitely want to... Keep in touch with you, all right? You take care, buddy. Thanks, guys. All right, with that said, um, I, I absolutely love that he had that to add in. Um, I did want to include um, a couple things when it comes to family, and that is that um, I really liked the point that you made that family is the way that they act. Yeah. And um, I actually Jen. have a good amount of adopted family that um, I would... I'd, I'd be ready to fight you if you tried to tell the difference, if you tried to say that they weren't, you know, and, and that's really important. Um, let's see, anything else? No, I think that's about it. Next week we are going to be back to where we were with Jamie and I. Matt, I want to thank you again so much for coming on. Uh, thank you for ending out season one and getting us uh, started on season two with a great... Matt's disappearing. <laughs> Um, I did that because somebody texted me to say, hold up the shirt and challenge him to do some sort of green screen thing. But the thing is, the green screen's on, so they're not going to be able to take a picture of the green. <laughs> they won't be able to. Um, I, I'm thrilled to be yeah. here. Thanks for, thanks for asking me, not absolutely to, for the season finale and the season premiere. Uh, hey! Hey, they turned it off. So now I will hold up the shirt. Uh, let me fold this down just a little bit, and they can, they can have some kind of contest to, I don't know, Put something silly below me, uh, <laughs> or behind me, or around us. We can, yeah, turn off the green screen. Do it. You can put your crosses right here, or a halo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to see that online. Um, uh, for anybody else who wants to keep in touch and uh, get to know the community, oh, um, mail at talkheathen.com. You can find us on Reddit, r slash. Talk Heathen. Uh, we do have a Facebook. We do have TalkHeathen.com. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and um, do you remember the old line that ended uh, the atheist experience? We don't hate you. We just think you're wrong. That's how we end this one. That, that, I don't think I ever did that. I think it may no, have been before me before or other you? people. Doing it. And they used to do love rings because that was the graphic that that, that old machine could do. So it's throwing out love rings. You wanna? You, would you help me end the show with our with our our catchphrase ending? We don't hate you. Uh, I'll do it. You'll do it. I have I have an objection. Oh. <laughs> this is this is me. This is me nipping at <laughs> it. So if I say we don't hate you, we just think you're wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, what the thing is is I don't hate them I just am not convinced that they're right so because I'm not going to adopt a burden of proof but I will say that as far as I can tell I think they're wrong about whether or not their beliefs are justified if that's so now we can the, do that you feel good we don't, we don't hate you that? we just think you're wrong alright you ready yep 
All right. We don't, we don't hate, hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong.